private means that the class members are hidden from the code. All right, I want you to visualize something here. I want you to visualize the code that you write in when you're when you're making a program. All right, and I'm going to separate. I'm going to I'm going to call this your main as well because we have a main tab in Raptor. And we often make a main uh, module in Python. And right, I want you to think about that code and I want you to think about that code separately from your class. And what this public and private do uh, and this relates back to that concept of data hiding that we talked about earlier. When, when something is public, we can get from the main to the class, and we can get from the class back into main. And in our class, we usually depict what the class looks like by separating it in two. And we put the class name up at, top, up at the top. And we put the fields up here. Just when we're, when we're thinking about or illustrating what a class looks like. Put the fields up here. And we put methods down here. So the rule of thumb that I showed you on the previous uh, table was that fields should be made private and methods should be made public. So when fields are made private, We can't get between the code and the fields directly. In order for us to get from the code to the fields, we have to go through the public methods. The public methods then can do that input validation. They can check to make sure that the, that the main is sending some good data and only allow that good data up into the fields. Right, because we generally make fields private, and the reason we make fields private is so that the, the main code can't access it directly. We make the methods public so that the main code has to go through them and can check things before we allow it to be held, uh, stored in the object as a field. All right, so let's take a look at an example in pseudocode of a class. Uh, what's class? You should be thinking to yourself, a class is code. It's like a blueprint. So this is defining what a cell phone might have to know and have to do. We are creating uh, three private member variables or fields. And then what is often done since these are private, we need a way to get to them. We need main needs to be able to use these. So what you usually do is make a public set and a public get. These are just names for special types of methods. And it's not a, it's not a predefined uh, rule that you have to call them sets and gets, but that's how they work. Right, how they work, back to the example here, was that the, the sets a set would interact with the main code to pass a variable as an argument 
to a method, and then the, well, the set is a method. So the set is the method that passes an argument from the main to the object, and if the if the method approves, if it the validation passes, it gets assigned to the to the private member field. All right, in this particular example, they're not doing any checking. They are just taking whatever gets passed in from main. They're calling it manufact. That's the parameter name. You might need to review functions or modules if, um, if you've forgotten them. This is our parameter name. We're just taking our parameter name and assigning it to our field name. The data type of the parameter has to match the data type of the field name because that's what the parameter is going to end up doing. It's going to be assigned to the field. So we have a set for this one, a set for this one, a set for the next one, and then we have gets. And how the gets work are to return from the field through a method back to the main. All right, the get never takes any arguments. There's no, no parameters here for gets because you just, you don't have anything that you need to send into the function. You just want to return from the function. The data type of the function Remember when there's a value returning function, you have to have the data type of what it returns. The data type is going to match the data type of the field that you're getting. And you're just going to return the field name. So if you know if you know the data that needs to be held by the object or by the class, and you know the data types, this code practically writes itself. You have to do a get and a set for each one, and you just have to pass along the parameter name to the field name and match up the data types in each one of them. Each one of the gets has a return in it. Each one of the sets has an assignment operation in it. And this, these, the, the gets and sets are just ways for the main to interact with the private member variables. So back to this table that I've made. Gets and sets are special kinds of methods. Or it's just a name for certain types of methods. Uh, another word you'll hear used for gets are accessors. We're just accessing the fields with our get methods. Another word you'll hear with sets are mutators, because we're actually changing fields when we use a set. And we'll talk about constructors in a second. Okay, so here is the main code that, uh, still pseudocode, but the main code that would use that class cell phone. And we are declaring a new variable called my phone, but really this variable is called an object. It's an instance of the cell phone class. All right, the cell phone is the cookie cutter, and my phone is the cookie. This is what actually creates the memory location that you like reads the blueprint to, to, to create the house. And at this point you should be drawing on a blank piece of paper or on a, on a document. You should have what this, what does this um, my phone look like in memory? All right, if when we have a, a, a diagram of what the cell phone looks like on one of the 
one of the later slides in, in the book. It's got a manufacturer model and retail price. Um, it's got these methods. So this is kind of what the blueprint looks like for the cell phone. So for my phone, you want to draw something that looks like this. Not just one box called my phone, but and these are these are empty right now. We're about to assign these. But when it first gets created, you want to draw something that looks like this. It's called my phone and it has a box to store the manufacturer, the model number, and the retail price. All right, that's what's going on uh, from this line. It is reading the blueprint, which is here, to, to create the house, to create the memory location, which is here. Right, this is your visualization of what's going on in RAM from this code. Uh, when you call set manufacturer and you pass the argument Motorola, that is what's writing Motorola into this memory location. You have to identify to the computer the object name, my phone. Then you're using the uh, method name, set manufacturer, and you're passing the argument of Motorola. That's this. We're doing the set. We have the code set being used in main. We're passing Motorola as the argument. It's going into that method that was defined within the class and passing it to the field. Here is, here is set manufacturer. So when Motorola gets passed into here, it becomes manufact then manufact gets passed on to manufacturer. Same thing with M1000 for the model number and 199 for the retail price. So when this program runs, or after you, after you set, remember you have to set before you get. If you, you can't, getting is going to read what's ever in these fields it's going to access this memory location and output it. But it's going to go through the gets. It's going to come through the get to return the field through here. So the code is still in main for the, for the get, but it exists in here and goes up to here. Right, and this is explaining that stuff that I just talked about. And the last thing that I'll talk about on this video is the concept of a constructor. And uh, exercise one does not use a constructor. Um, well, all, all programs that use objects use a constructor. But if you don't make one, if the programmer doesn't make one, then the code, the program writes one itself, right? The computer writes one itself. The only time you need to write a constructor is when you want certain things to happen every time you create an object. Every time you create an instance of a class, if you want certain things to happen, you have to write a constructor. For instance, if you want to initialize the fields, if you want these fields to always have a certain value every time a new instance of the class gets created, every time a new object gets created, you would put that in a constructor. And I will pick up on that when I give an example of using constructors in a further video. And I'm going to talk about UML, um, inheritance and polymorphism in another video.